Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classics of Cinematics, and this is the show where we talk about the films that shaped and warped our childhoods, and I'm joined as always with my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, and it's summertime, man, so we decided we would probably take a look at a, a film that reminds us of summertime, you know, being youth and running around through the streets and, and just having fun, man, you know, when life was a lot you know, carefree, you know, we're going to be talking about, um, the Sandlot yeah, yeah. from 1993. And it's interesting, bro. I feel like the last three or four films we've talked about have been from 93. <laughs> hey, and the 90s was a good time, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Sandlot is directed by David Mickey Evans, and it's also narrated by him, interestingly enough. Um, but the story goes as this when Scotty Smalls, moves to a new neighborhood, he manages to make friends with a group of kids who play baseball at the sand lot. Together, they go on a series of funny and touching adventures. The boys run into trouble when Smalls borrows a ball from his stepdad that gets hit over a fence and they try to recover it. And the cast of this film, uh, we got a, a, a nice ensemble. I mean, they were pretty mostly, uh, you know, People, They're child actors, at yeah, that child point, actors, you know, notable child actors. Mm -hmm. I, you, you don't see much of them in anything, yeah. So, we get uh, Mike Vitar, Patrick Renner, Tom Geary, um, Chauncey Leo Party, David Mickey Evans, um, or director, um, dang, so hold up, um, is that the director, David Mickey Evans? Oh, no, just gotta confirm, um, yeah, so he plays the old, that's or crazy. Older smalls yeah. one who's watching Benny, played, yeah, the yeah, end. yeah, that's nice. wild. So, he's in the movie as well. So, we got Marty York, uh, James Earl Jones is in this, Shane Obed Zinski, uh, Dennis Leary as well, man, which was a surprise when I rewatched it. Um, Marley Shelton, uh, plays uh, the pool girl, Wendy the lifeguard, uh, Karen Allen, Athena Smalls is uh, mom. Um, we get a lot of people, uh, you know, Grant Gelt, uh, Victor, Demadia, Brandon Adams is another one of the kids. And I guess is that everybody, Will Horniff? Did and, you, uh, you, uh, you, you, you spoke on, uh, Ham, right? Dude up at the, up the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick we got Ram? him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we got him. Um, I was about to say, he was in like big, mm -hmm. big Disney films. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's most of the main guys. I mean, it, it is a film, you know, about a bunch of neighborhood kids uh, playing baseball. And it just reminds me a lot my youth man so so what uh one of the things that uh stands out to me in this film i mean outside of the fact that this film engulfs summertime friendship camaraderie you know and all the trouble that you know youth can get into or you know whether it's simple fun or you know a little deeper than that the main thing that stands out to me about this film is the storytelling mm -hmm. the, the way that this this story is told and the way it translates on film I know this is a group of nine kids, but when you watch this film, you feel like you're the 10th member. You know what I'm saying? Like it, they, they bring us right into their world and, and we're right along on this adventure with them. And the way that they, like I said, the way they, they, they translate it on screen and the narration just like intensifies the story in such a way. That's every time I watch this. That's what what stands out to me more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, um, definitely. Yeah, that that sense of camaraderie, man. It's, it's almost like um, a story that's taking place in in in, in a film like Goonies, man, where you've yeah. got the same ensemble group of neighborhood kids that that play together, get in trouble together, and you know, and help each other out and support each other, man. Mm -hmm. So, so that is an interesting um aspect of it. Um, well, bro, it's funny that you just brought up Goonies because I was reading this article where these people were debating what's the best film. Uh, when it comes to this genre, is it Goonies or Sandlot? Mm -hmm. Me, I feel like you know they're both awesome in their own right. But yes, you're you're absolutely. If I gotta right. pick one though. I'm gonna probably gonna go with the Goonies. I gotta go with Goon Squad all day because this is a more outrageous. Hey, um, you guys. But, but 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 I do like the um one of the aspects you know the storytelling of this man yeah. the idea to go with that um, narration I think mm -hmm. that's cool it, it's mm -hmm. I mean it's something. That we see, you know, I mean, maybe two years, three years before that, they did that in Goodfellas very effectively. And it seems like they employ that same tactic here, which takes us, it kind of guides us along, takes us from scene to scene, puts us into the mind state of the of the main character, what they're dealing with. Because it's kind of cool, man. This kid's kind of been moving around a lot. He just moved to the neighborhood. 
at the very end of the school year. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really have time to make friends before school's out. And now he's trying to run around in, in the summer to kill some time. And he finds out these neighborhood kids are playing baseball, pick up games, and, and he joins them, you know? Well, he tries to join them. You know what I'm saying? At first, he's not welcomed by anyone except for Ben. But mm -hmm. the, the, the cool thing is, is that when you got the leader of the pack having your back, it's all good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. Like, Benny, we see as the film progresses, Benny is, he is not just the leader, he's the front runner, but he is the ultimate, like, cement that keeps this this group together, you know, because they all, it's, it's baseball is everything, you know, and, and when it comes to baseball, you know, Benny is, he's great beyond his years when it comes to the sport and his craft. But the thing about him is that, you know, he also understands that that friendship and camaraderie that trumps all that stuff. You know what I mean? And so even though he knows he's good, he doesn't belittle any of, you know, his friends. He actually tries to push them to excel and see the greatness in themselves and, and, and keep emphasizing that. That's how Smalls gets in because he's like, man, you know what? Hey, man, if you got you ain't got a glove here. Take mine. You ain't got yeah, a glove. He's the type of guy that you know you know wants I mean? everyone to feel included and, yeah. and welcome. And that's what gets um, small Zen. But, but like one of the aspects of the story, like it's cool because, you know, we still don't know what the main um, plot of this is a ghost. We just know that, you know, it's a neighborhood. It's like a, a you know, snapshot of their summer, how they're kicking it. And he becomes one of the, the members and they, and they get into this oddball adventures until um you know we get into that that main plot situation where you know they lose a ball and i think this is where the thing Not starts to, any ball well they lose a regular ball right so then smalls it goes and, and gets a ball to replace that ball that they lost because you know and his his dumb ass i don't know why he picks the the babe roof ball with all the signatures you know what i'm saying the baseball that is that his stepdad has and it's just like dude well initially out the gate when he when he first you know, gets, you know, brought into the team. Benny hits a home run and he goes up to the fence. That's when we find out about the beast. He's like, oh, I'll go get the ball. He tries to go jump over the fence and they're all like, nah, nah, nah. And then then that's when they have the little camp out. That's when we get the s'mores, the all that, you know, the, the storytelling by Squints, which is also awesome. Mm -hmm. um, then Ham ends up hitting a home run. They don't have no, no baseball. They get another baseball. What ends up happening as they, you know, the summer progresses and then they keep continue to play these games. Smalls, after Ham hits the uh, the the baseball over the fence, he's like, "Man, you know what? I got another ball." They go get they they go get his ball. Then that's when he takes the Bay Ruth ball, and since he was the one who got the ball, Ben he's like, "You know what? Go ahead, you you get the you know you get the first bat, <laughs> yeah. you know." And then he hits his only home run, mm -hmm. and, and my man he's he's like, "Oh no!" And he and he's running past second. He just starts running towards the fence. He's like, "They're like, nah, man, you got to go to third base, you know, clear clear the bases." Mm -hmm. It's like, "Nah, man, I oh no, this is bad. This is bad." <laughs> well, the crazy part about it is like. I don't see how they got that ball in there. Like whoever was pitching didn't see that this thing has a signature on it, and like didn't. So that, that's a plot hole for me. But I mean, essentially, the, the reason why the fence is a problem because there's this dog on the other side yes. of the fence, and this is probably one of my favorite parts of it because we're looking at it from a child's yes. exaggerated point of view, man. So it, it's a dog. It's probably like a Saint Bernard kind of a. It's actually a bull, it's a bull mask. Um. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Those dogs are really big in real yeah, life, but yeah. when you're when you're you know yay high and like you said, the, a child's imagination. But, but yeah, so all of a sudden this thing is like the size of a T Rex. Like like I love I love these moments because like there's like glimpses of the shadows like on the other side of the fence. And you're like, yo, what the hell is that? And, and the snarling like, inside. Yeah, and the, the noises that yes. like, like a dragon yes. and, and um the and, face and, the, the fence be shaking and shit. And, and take it <laughs> back to to one of my favorite moments, like you were talking about when they were eating s'mores and they were talking about because you know this nighttime that they've lost the ball they, they, they can't really play no more until someone comes up with a ball but then they're telling you the lore of the, the of the of yes. the beast and then and it's all black and white footage and, and they start <laughs> off with this little cute puppy and all of a sudden it's this big ass dog and, 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 and a car it's yeah, like big it's yeah, inside of a station wagon yeah, and, and, and <laughs> no one can handle this it's killed a hundred and some people and you're like dude come on yeah for 20 
173. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a perfect um en- encapsulation of what little kids in their minds, and it's like a fish story, man. Yeah. You know, the, the longer you tell it, the longer time goes, the bigger everything involved gets, man. And, and it is one of those great moments for me, man. Like that passes. This thing takes place in um 62, so so yeah. that's another thing that stands out to me. Is it's a period piece in a way, you know, the, the sights and the sounds and um the way of life, the cars, you know, the, the, the living. Scene. You see, they're, they're, they're all, you know, all the houses got the doors open. Yeah, you know it's what like I mean? small town um, suburbia you yeah. know, in America at, at the time. My man, man small, he did, it like, it was 4th of July. My man just runs, he's like, Mom, I'm going to go play baseball. I'll be back in a few. Mm-hmm. He's like, what? <laughs> did you do that? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I guess you know where he was. was. I mean, <laughs> like, it, it was cool, man. Like, it, 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 and also the other adventures, I think that, that helps seal this crew because he's he's still the new guy and other guys know each other but 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 then they get into other adventures you know they're hanging out at the the the, the fair you know what I'm saying? the fair that was and, um, that was celebrations because they had to put they, they had to put that work in mm-hmm. on the prep team and yeah. that's that's the other thing like you can tell that these kids these were it's not that they were the less fortunate but they, you know, they played baseball for the love of the game. Mm-hmm. None of them were on like organ. They, none of them were playing organized. Yeah, sports. they didn't have the money. It seemed you know, like they didn't have the money. They were, they were, you those. know, they were, they were scraping by like your average everyday, mm-hmm. you know, young ones. I mean, when that, that little prep squad comes in and you know comes to their spot in the sandlot, all suited and booted yeah, on their is. bikes and everything. That's why I love Ham. You know, Ham was. Uh, I know Benny was the goat, but Ham was my favorite character in this because he. He always talked his trash. He, you he know, was the mouth. Uh, he, he was the mouth, but he also he was chest out. Even though he was a little little husky, you know what I'm saying? It's all right, you know. But I was a husky one when I was young, and I'm still husky now. I don't give a damn. But nevertheless, he um man, he always always front running, always talking trash, and and he said it with his chest. He meant it. Mm-hmm. And then when when it was time to show and prove. He did what he had to do, man. Yeah, and and and, and it, it, I mean, it's a film that doesn't get you know that serious, you know. And and there, are, like I said, there's funny moments that that I think help you know gel them together, mm-hmm. man. Um, like who, who's my man at the pool, man? That that oh, that, that squint. That squints was crazy, man. That was that was just the wildest <laughs> moment, and it, it is you know it it, it, it it is messed up for him to do that, but then you see why, and it's just one of the yeah. funniest scenes, dude. Like it's just it's crazy, man. Basically, yeah. there's this, this cute lifeguard and he's got a crush on her and he, and, he, and he feigns like he's drowning in order to get him to save her and she pulls him out and get, doing him off the mouth and and he kisses her and and, and, and then it's just so wild and then they all get kicked out but it, but it's just it's another one of those um team building moments yeah. man because even them being in trouble together that that's one of the things that that kind of you know gels friendships and, and brings you know, peer groups together, you know, yes. back in those times, man. Like, yeah. there, there's plenty of times where we were running around doing something we shouldn't have been done, and, and all of us got in trouble once our folks found out. And yes. it just it just made you more, you know, it's almost like like your 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 bonds is being tested under it's, fire. And you it's know? strengthening. And, that, and that's <laughs> the thing about this. Even though baseball is, like, the, the cornerstone of this film, everything they do, they do as a unit. They do as a team. They mm-hmm. win, they lose, they get in trouble, whatever the case may be, as a team, you know, and mm-hmm. and don't no one strays away from that. There, there's no outsiders on, the, you know, in the pack, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that 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 is great. Like I said, this is a testament to, you know, you know, like youth, friendship and camaraderie and the loyalties and the bonds that are built that will last a lifetime. Dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. So also going back to just, you know, some of this casting, because, you know, all the kids, for the most part, I think some of them might have done some other movies movies with kids you know at this point but most of them were fresh faces to us uh, but i did notice dennis leary stood out to yeah. me when i was re-watching this and and it's interesting because he was kind of on fire at this moment man this is yeah. him coming off of that that mtv wave and he's starting to do um uh, films and and i remember like even him in like who's the man and he he's actually a really good actor yeah. man like when he was coming in and doing these smaller parts you and know he's first time. dude i mean because this this was around the same time when you you, you had him in judgment night you had him in the ref, which I love the ref. Uh, that, that's one of my one of my top like seven Christmas movies. Um, he was also in yeah, like I said, uh, Who's the Man, and then uh, uh what's it, uh, Su- Suicide Kings. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, and all these films were in the '90s, but then it's like, what happened to Dennis Leary, man? Yeah, I, I remember he had that um the TV show for a while. Um, uh, so so yeah, that's crazy, dude. So this might have been like his fifth movie. He did a uh, Loaded Weapon. 
with <laughs> with um the, the lethal weapon. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. um, the Sandlot. Um, who's the man? Gunman, Demolition Man, Judgment Knight, uh, Ref, uh, Muppets, and I, yeah, he kind of yeah he was doing stuff, but nothing really big after that. Man, Suicide Kings that was kind of a um, you know nice one, but a lot of voice work. But then I remember he got that um, TV show, The Fireman Show. Yeah. And, um, and he did that, that was a good show. Dude. Yeah, that it mean? was. Yeah, yeah, they got that a bunch was. of pieces out of that too, man. Mm -hmm. So I think you know mm -hmm. that was good that, for him to be able to get that, you know, at the um, end. Um, I think he also played um, Amazing Spider Man. He was Gwen Stacy's dad. Um, but he's kind of been on uh, quiet now, doing a lot of voice acting work though. I will say that, like, there's nothing but voice TV credits hey. after that. But yeah, 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 it was great just to get him, just to add more, you know, you know more. Um, what do you call it, man? Just, just to punch this thing up a little bit more. Yeah. Make it, give it a more better feel, you know? And you know, another thing that I love is, uh, like, like you said, to your point earlier, that we get to view this through the imaginative mind of, mm -hmm. of, of, a young, of young individuals, you know what I'm saying? Because everything is oversaturated, overemphasized. The way, the way we view mm -hmm. things when we are young mm -hmm. is always over exaggerated you know what i mean like i love like once once they hit the bay roof ball over the fence when they go into this montage of them just trying to go through hell and back to, to mm -hmm. get the ball back the only thing they don't want to do is the one reasonable thing to do which is go knock on the door yeah, yeah. and ask my man they think they, 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 the way they sell it they the are, dog just lives there by itself yeah. pays the rent yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> buys exactly, own food. but he's chained up the whole town <laughs> he's collecting baseballs and bodies all in the yeah. same hole you know what i mean but i kind of get it though man i think that's one of the things at least being that age like Dealing with adults could have been just a little harrowing, like especially yes. adults you didn't know. You didn't yes. want to just knock on strange doors or, yes. or talk to, you know, strange adults. And, and I mean, <laughs> in their mind, it's like, yo, if the beast is our ultimate like fear, <laughs> who's the owner? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <man. They> <laughs> so, so, but you love those moments because there's that one moment when uh, when the ball goes up. Oh, you see this big head it, it looks like the t-rex head on the it looks park like, and yeah, it's like or like it reminds me of like the poster <laughs> art of jaws yeah. you know the baseball is the stick and jaws i mean because that i mean the dog i mean he's not even that and, big and even dog. then you can't even see the full dog you just no, see you like just see the head shadow, yeah. it's just like eat the baseball it's like dude and that's the other thing too it's like bro they go through everything <laughs> under the sun to get yeah. this ball back Soon after it was hit over the fence, the ball's destroyed. It's, I mean, it's got dirt, slobber. I'm surprised if the, <laughs> the damn signature ain't smeared mm -hmm. off. By the time they finally recover it, I mean, it looks like... Probably a little dusty, though. Maybe it looks worse than what it... Maybe you could take a little, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right, though. Yeah, I yeah, because, yeah. The, it, it looks like it, it has been devalued, mm -hmm. you know, in a major way, you know? But, dude, I, I it, like I said, but it, it's just... A testament to their inventiveness, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, the the these little inventions that they make, these these, it's, it's these this creative mind. I mean, the yeah. way they made this like vacuum that like goes all put the little uh, what the catcher's mask at the end of it, like, <laughs> and then the damn clubhouse blows up, mm -hmm. and then lucky you know, lucky for them, you know, the last attempt before they just knock over oh, well, before Benny has to pickle the beast. Uh, what's the name? Smalls. It was a little genius on the low and uh, had a connects or an erector set or oh, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are <laughs> the coolest you know, catapults in life I've ever seen. I'm like, dang, these these kids, they're, they're, they're wise beyond their years, man. Like, you know, I, I, I couldn't see me or my folks doing that. I mean, we, we might get a couple sticks mm -hmm. and maybe some matches. Like, let's burn the fence down. <laughs> it's crazy. because <laughs> let's, let's burn a hole in the fence. <laughs> it's so wild, man, because, like... <laughs> Everything that's happening is just so exaggerated. They, they shove the little stick to try to reach it, and then it, it's just chewed off on the other end when they pull it out. Yeah, and man. it's just and it's just in or the one scene where they're trying to dig, and this big ass paw comes like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Like, dude, the beast great, is man. just. It, but you know what? All of it, you know, it it is just it's very tactic tactically done in in enjoyment in this this story building because we get this ultimate you know, 
ending where Benny has to pickle the beast. <laughs> Look at him. He's going with the, <laughs> the paw just yeah. grabbed the little pot lid. Oh, you, know? you know, and, and, you know, and that's, that, that yet is just a testament to the leadership of Benny the Jet for, for his squad. Cause like, I mean, end of the day, he's like, man, you know what? All these little inventions, <laughs> all this other stuff we got going on. Nah, none of that's going to work. Yeah. If someone, one. if someone's got to do it, I got to do it. I got to hop this fence. I got to, you know, look the beast in the face, snag the ball and dip out. But this is definitely exact. Like, like the, the, the dog now is done taking their contraptions, chewing them up and then throwing them back over the fence. It's yeah, like, man. It's definitely and, I mean, look at, look the exaggeration. At the now. It looks like it, of the of the retelling man you know the fishtail aspect of it mm -hmm. but i mean eventually you know they do what they ultimately should have been done and you know they knock on the door and this is probably one of the best moments to me because this you know it's already been a fun ride and then it's like to put the cherry on top is it's james earl jones who's the owner of the beast and he's just so cool, dude. He's like this old man who loves baseball, and and it's just like a warm, inviting face after these dudes have been through the trenches, going mm -hmm. going to war with the peace. Like, like I thought, I thought that was cool, man. All I'm saying, one of my favorite parts, like I said, right before, you know, after, you know, because Benny has his dream, he sees Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth looks at him. <laughs> he's like, "Yo, boo boo boo, this what you gotta do." Yeah, he's like, "Man, you telling me I gotta pickle the beast?" And then my man, my man Small, he was like, then he broke out his secret weapon, the PF Flyer, <laughs> guaranteed to make any kid run faster oh, or jump higher. You know what I'm saying? I put mine on today. I don't know if I might have to pick up any beef, but, you know, I, lo I love that. I love that, dog. And then, man, that whole scene where he, you know, jumps the fence, gets the ball, then runs through the whole town. So my man became a legend in this town before he made it to the big leagues. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I mean, they ran through, they they ruined the parade. <laughs> <laughs> they ruined the movie theater. You know what I'm saying? It was so cool too, because they were watching the Wolfman and then as the Wolfman is like transforming, the damn beast jumps through the screen. Yeah, that, that definitely had to be done. Yeah. The, the, the sizing of the- And then they're playing Wipeout the whole time. This is Wipeout. I was like, yo, this is amazing. And then, yeah, you know, like you said, when they finally just get to the point where, you know, all else fails, knock on the door man and it was so simple and it was like if you realize how much they could have avoided if that's all they did and from the very start too. and think about it think about all the other balls they've lost there's probably like dozens or maybe hundreds Dude, of dollars of balls that's the thing and they could have just you know since, like, they, since they saved the beast when the fence fell on them they pick him up oh yeah he yeah and he digs out mm -hmm. All their balls. He's like, "Yo, we friends now." And it's funny, um, because as like you said, as simple as it is, they could have just knocked on the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, soon, 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 they're like, "Yeah, you know, we we lost our ball." And he was like, "Why didn't you ask? Why didn't you let Jet guys just knock on the door?" Mm -hmm. They all look at uh, Squints. They're like, "Man, come on, man!" And they all start like <laughs> smacking them around. He's like, "What, guys? I didn't know. I didn't know." It's like, man, dude, you've been telling this over exaggerated story, yeah. the beast. Mm -hmm. You know. To every new member, y'all take them to the clubhouse, eat s'mores, and then you tell this story, dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. But, but I mean, it's a sweet movie. Um, I know they made um a bunch of um sequels to this thing. They made two. Um, in my mind, those I, never happen. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't even bothered. I wasn't even gonna bring them up, dog. Because like, like this, this story, the way it ends, it's perfect. So I don't even know what the setup is. It different kids, a different uh, different kids. Uh, different um. Kids. Just, uh, they, they, it's like like you look at Sandlot two and three, like you look at like Home Alone three and four. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's different yeah. kids going through the same stuff. Nah, man. nah. There's 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 only one Sandlot for me, mm -hmm. and it's funny because um I have two versions. I have the original version that I bought many many years ago uh, when I first started my DVD collection. Then I have one that has the other two. Mm. And I actually removed the other two out of that three pack because <laughs> I was like, "Yo, these th these things are coasters or frisbees, as far as I'm concerned." Yo, and that is crazy too because also um, James is blind, isn't he? Yeah, that's See, crazy. And that's to me. the thing. Like, so he was he was a former baseball player, mm -hmm. and um, he actually knew Babe Ruth. Like when they referenced Babe Ruth, he's like, "Oh, George," mm -hmm. you know. So like you can tell they folks. And then he has all this awesome memorabilia. And the thing is that he said when he was playing baseball, he used to crowd the plate so much. Mm -hmm. that it would almost obliterate the strike zone and 
he caught one, caught a fastball in the temple. Ooh, Lights went out. Dang. But I mean, it, it was just so like it, it gives me like it would give me the chills when I watch that part when he sits down and he's like giving you know giving the kids this 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 backdrop of who he is and he's like yeah man. Babe Ruth signed that ball. He was like, "Yeah, man." He was like, "Man, you, you, you ain't in the jam, dog. You're dead where you stand." And uh, but then he ends up giving small, uh, giving Smalls a baseball that's signed by the whole team, mm -hmm. the 1929 Yankees. I think they were called. It was like Murderers Row or something like that. But um, I mean, this, this uh, Lou Gehrig was on that team. Uh, it was a, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of very notable baseball players, and um. He was like, you know what? Yay. I'll just, I'll, I'll give y'all, I'll give y'all this ball. Just come and talk baseball with me once a week. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and that's all he wanted. He, I mean, yeah, he, he wants enjoyed, company, man, because the, 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 beast, the beast don't talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just needs some. And, 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 and then you find out he's just, he's just this like real simple living mm -hmm. blind old guy yeah. that's got a heart of gold. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how he knew knew where. The, I mean, I guess if you're blind and you know where your shit's at, but how he knew where that cabinet was and what was in hey, it. Man, and, you know, you just around, hey man. Yeah, you, you never know. Do you thrust in it, man? You know, once the lights go out, man. Is if you're still in the same same area, man. You you, you know, placement mm -hmm. is placement, man. But um, yeah, man, it, it, it's just so cool because I mean, look at him smiling. Yeah. He's just he's a good actor, man. Awesome. You feel that the feeling that he has, yes. that, like like he, he understands. Like you say, you're dead, like because you lost his ball. But but just seeing him, and he's just right th in this moment. I just imagine him being like, I was these guys before. You know what I'm saying? And they love the game, and I love the game, and we're like, it's just, that, it's, it comes across, man. Like like I said, it's a perfect cherry on top of this already great film yeah, this, just this scene just throwing throwing smalls a lifeline and then the, the the kicker in it is when uh you know in the narration of it when he's, he's like yeah so you know i gave bill i mean dad <laughs> yeah. uh, you know i told him about the Babe ruth ball mm -hmm. and he was pissed off at me but then i gave him the the the, the ball signed by all oh, the whole team mm -hmm. and he was like eh all right it's okay so instead of grounding me for my life he grounded me for a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dog, are you kidding he, me right now? You got a much better deal. Like, he, that was only one thing. Now you got all of them, you know? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, we're both collectors. So, you know, I'm like, shit, man. Hey, there, there's a there's a couple uh, of my, like, little action figures or memorabilia <laughs> that I got that I trade in for, you know. That's, 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 that baseball, that sign for everyone is, hey, man, that's, that's a once in a lifetime Mm -hmm. piece of memorabilia right there you ain't you ain't finding that everywhere dog you you had to had known someone that knows someone to get that mm -hmm. you know yeah man yeah that was great on um james uh part <laughs> yeah, man. and then you know not for nothing man it the way the film just comes full circle after we get this awesome like gratifying feeling from them meeting james earl and you know, then, then of course, now that they've got a kinship with the beast, mm -hmm. you know, he's even now, he's, he's cool with the stepdad yeah, now. He's, he's, yeah, you know, he's, playing he's, he's out there playing catch you know? with the stepdad, and then you know, it takes us into what would then be present time in '93, and you see, you know, because they they tell us, oh, that was nothing. I had to, I, had to, I had to write this down. The way they said it was so dope. Pretty much, you know, after that summer, he was like, man, no summer was like this one. Um, you know, and then uh, as as we move forward into going to middle school, growing into life, you know, people started moving away, but we never replaced their spot on the team. You know what I'm saying? Where where at the beginning of the film, it's like they were they were at, at eight people looking for their ninth member so they could have a full team. But once they had the full team, they never replaced them. So as people, you know, moved away and stuff, whether they had, you know, six people, four people, two people, no one got replaced. They just just continued to play the game as if everyone was there. And I thought that was that was, you know, a real you know dope way to to say like you know once you got your once you got your 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 pack your unit, everyone's irreplaceable. You you cannot replace them with anyone else. And then they you know they they move into, you know, what would be happening in that present time, and it shows that you know dreams come true, everything comes to fruition because Benny the Jet actually made it to the majors, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And he's, it, it shows him, you know, uh, playing ball for the Dodgers, which is funny because he was always wearing the Dodgers hat. And um, Smalls is actually the, 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 uh, the sports analyst, like the, the, the guy, uh, the, what do you, what do you call him? The, 
it's not the sports analyst, the, the guy that talks, uh, that gives uh, the gives commentary. The game, commentary. Announce there you go. Uh, he announced, there you go. Yeah, yeah he, for, for the team. So it shows that they still get to hang out. Like mm -hmm. if, if Benny's the professional on the team and he's the, the, the commentator announcer guy, you know, they're kicking it at, mm -hmm. you know, whenever after home games and stuff. And it just, you can see the excitement in him because, you know, Benny the Jet is like, uh, I guess they, they were they were down a little bit. And he's like, starts taking this massive lead. And then he steals home plate. That's one of the hardest things to do in baseball is steal home. And then you see that as it's happening, the crowd's roaring and everything. But then Smalls is just as excited. Like, soon when it happens, and he, he hits safe. Smalls, you you'd have thought he did it himself. He's like, <laughs> he stole home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He starts high five and everyone in there, they're like, damn, dog, what's going on? Just <laughs> yeah. love it, man. It's just, you know, it just shows this it's it's the ultimate, you know, kinship, friendship, loyalty, man. It it just it's all, you know, like that's that that's how that's how it works, man. Like you don't have to be the one winning to feel like you are when you know your homeboy is. You know what I mean? And this this film just it, it emphasizes that in so yeah, many ways. It was a great film, man. It still holds up on watching it. Um, do want to point out Benny the Jet was not a real player. This made up for this film because I was looking that the, when I first saw it, I was like, damn, <laughs> this is dope, man, this is a true story. <laughs> right. Know, but it was That's not. What I'm <laughs> but, but ultimately, man, this thing definitely stands out, man. It's got a lot of really great stuff going for it. Um, you know, it's just just one of those ones, man. It's a classic. You know, you throw it on or you catch it on TV here and there and just sit back and watch your favorite scenes from it and just enjoy. It's just a great story, you know, overall, you know. Yeah, man. I definitely appreciate it. Feel good, family fun. Uh, I love this film. I, I, I've seen it a thousand times. I watch it a thousand times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is currently, if you do want to see it recent now, uh, without having to pay, it's included with Amazon Prime right now so you can check it out i think they do have the sequels but i don't, I don't care about those they ain't make no sequels <laughs> yeah the, the sequels aren't free it's to watch on here but yeah. saying a lot is they, they gotta pay me to watch the sequels <laughs> yeah but i think that's it folks man we're gonna wrap this thing up man we're gonna be back soon um we got a bunch of bangers on the way man we got some more stuff coming and um yeah so Gonna catch y'all next time, folks, on another episode of Classes of Cinematics. Make sure you to subscribe. And um, this has been Monk. You can catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter, Instagram. Follow um our Instagram Classics of Cinematics. Um, that's where we post up what we're gonna be doing and little teasers and just fun stuff, you know, little clips and things that you know we put together just to keep our name out there. Mm -hmm. And remember, there's heroes, there's legends. <laughs> heroes get remembered. Legends never die. Bobby Blockbuster, catch me at <laughs> Bobby Blockbuster 118 on Instagram. Yeah, that's what's up, folks. We out. Yeah.